Uh, hi, daily trading recap for this Wednesday, the 29th of December, 2021. Two more days left in this year of trading for 2021. We're excited to see what the end of this year will bring us and what the start of the new year 2022 will have in store for us. But yeah, kind of just lackluster day, a little sideways day on the market and spy itself. As for dollar volume around the horn on the market, NASDAQ showing $124 billion volume as of 11 minutes after the close here. NICE $152 billion volume, OTC is $1.5 billion volume. So again, kind of hitting pretty low on the mark there for uh, just dollar volume wise of interest in the market that way. But still, again, always opportunity. Uh, anytime the market is open, there's always going to be price movement and price movement certainly means opportunity to make money so that's what we're here to try to do today i was two for three on the day in three different tickers and kind of a little break even one for the loss there and uh, tsoi the otc sticker i was in that was a little interesting one there that uh ruffled some feathers that i haven't been in in a while uh, so that'll be a good breakdown there and good lesson to learn from again as well and then ptpi which we are still currently in um, at the moment but probably looking to potentially cut uh, but that will break that down in the individual tickers themselves. Uh, I think that's all I mentioned for the introduction. Just going over some tickers for me on the reference point of what I'm looking forward, looking to going forward for these first green day plays. We had CANF kind of as a first green day, um, first green day off of that big parabolic spike there, but also a standalone call it first green day in itself, just a little bit of volume increase um, off of just whatever, just stupid news catalyst, whatever happened today. Uh, but I did have this little perk, but everything I'm looking for just as an overall sentiment beyond the float, the fundamentals, the any overhead um, price movement sector of this ticker, all those different factors that way. I'm just looking for the what is the sentiment and what is the type of price action that's happening and keeping a reference of those charts to say, okay, in this type of market, these types of charts work out this certain way. So CNANF and YGMZ. Not that they're, not that they're similar, but looking at these same kind of ideas that Hey, looking at a potential entry point of price action failing to maintain that line of VWAP, volume weighted action, volume weighted average price, looking to see pretty much from there, you're set in gold for the not only pre-market, but the morning session, especially, which is what I'm looking for hard to just be in and out in the morning. Give me whatever the first hour, first hour and a half of market open brings. Uh, that's kind of what I'm most excited about, most willing to put in the most time in there. And if the opportunities, of course, show themselves more or greater in the afternoon, then we'll have to adjust and go from there that way. But these two tickers were great sentiments on the short side, in my view, of, okay, I'm seeing a predictable, repeatable pattern here of if they're failing to maintain view up at this point. Um, and this one's a little bit more choppy on CANF, but, you know, just around or after that initial spike off of News Catalyst or whatever's pushing this thing. If you're getting an entry price here and of course using a wider risk level of that previous high of that spike of the high of day in pre-market there it still can kind of test or buck you around and some of these are going to have to be able to adapt and understand okay this one's a little bit different and it's spiking pretty hard against me like an isig maybe for instance or um, other tickers along that line but using these same type of charts as the trade pattern the playbook pattern Gosh, these are nice little profit opportunities there. Nice, easy sits that you just kind of can keep the chart in the corner and not have to pay too much hard attention to, but not completely disregard whatsoever. But nice, easy sits as a short trade for me. I'm in my book. KNDI was a second day player today. Same kind of thing. Not a lot of action volume in pre market today, but total sentiment during market hours in that morning session there was just death and overwhelming death on that one. And again, not as much volume or liquidity in that one today, but repeatable pattern there to play on that one pyr a third day play same type of thing had a little bit of the same thing on that second day yesterday for this one after that first crazy green day on monday but again the same type of thing today just out of the gate straight from the get-go that sentiment is just death upon us and continual bleeding for all the longs that are still trying to back hold this thing so good reference point there good charts to keep in the playbook for the meantime of if similar charts can start to follow along that same type of modality, it doesn't matter what the overhead is. It doesn't matter what this ticker is. Uh, it doesn't matter if everybody else and their grandma on Twitter is long this thing and saying it's going to the moon. It's just playing the patterns as they are um, and what they're saying they're going to do that way. All right, let's get into the tickers. ABCT, I'll go over first. Went along on this one. Just, I think I mentioned it yesterday as well too, just kind of weird price action and following along similar to CEI, maybe you could call it, of the kind of blocky, how it traded that way. Uh, but it just, 
hitting too well enough of marks if we take out today's action before it just failed all those marks of god it's just been holding around continuing to put in higher lows here testing these little break i had these little breakout um fake out not even a fake out but a, a rejection to sell off after that attempt again sell off just these little kind of ups and downs little wikis there same thing that we can see on the daily here just trying to ride over this huge resistance day um psychologically wise on this big top wiki candle that was the uh, 10th of this month that way but just using that daily to say man this is uh it's 20 ish million floater lower floater american cloud tech company we love the tech sector but just if we start to ride closer and closer to these levels i think there could be something to happen from this one it's probably not going to be just so perfect and pristine to sit in and be a part of i might get chopped out a little bit i was definitely willing to accept that if that was going to happen today and that's what ended up happening on that first little in and out that became the only in and out um, but yeah looking for any amount of breaks breakout to the upside and especially looking at i knew it was going to be two eight ish here around there for a true breakout at this point and then Gosh, three bucks. That whole dollar level of was obviously obviously going to be looming if we were going to get to those elevated stages um, to develop the trade later on if we were starting to hit those marks like plan A, plan B, plan C, if we were reaching those levels. But, you know, sure enough, I, again, like to kind of scale into these pre-market just to not so much avoid the dilemma of market open, but just to say, um, I think the thesis is there for this trade today. I'm going to establish a position, but I'm willing to cut it if the signs still in pre-market say that it's not going to work from that time frame and still give it plenty of time to go on as a kind of way to, <laughs> this is just the opposite of this, but um, keep the mind and perspective open to be able to recognize what is happening within the first two minutes of that morning bell um, and not be so just bogged down of, okay, well, I got a fill price here. Oh, okay, well, it dropped like five more cents, but it's still showing green. Okay, I'll get an entry here of getting in just a stupid roll that way, but saying, hey, I think it's kind of bottoming here. We're continuing to put in higher lows on this longer-term perspective, on the intra-daily perspective that way. <laughs> I think there is some meat to the bone here. And even looking at the level two time in sales, uh, when I'm in this time frame of mind of, okay, hey, we're pushing a little bit of decent volume here. Oh, that rejected. Well, it's not just completely dying off yet and still looking to size in on small portions. I think I ended up sizing in 200 shares. So yeah, 50 shares at a time. I was just like, I knew I wasn't going to be sizing in, um, that I definitely had time to start elaborating in, like I mentioned with the kind of plan A, plan B, plan C, if it was starting to reach key levels of 2.7. Now we get to 2.8 um, and looking for far more upside than there than what it showed today, obviously. But then got faked out pretty hard on the, I knew if it broke 2.52, okay, that's going to be my point of just keep it a super small risk for the sake of okay obviously i'm doing a little bit something different let's clean the palette open the perspective to recognize what's going on we'll obviously have it is not a fomo type of trade that you have to be in it at this point or it's just you're chasing at that point it is not one of those trades or charts today um, but gosh i got a little faked out on the as it broke that 252 bottom and sure enough it reverses back to that right above that little price range i was sitting uh, but just market open gives the sentiment that it was just death and bleeding and view app rejections all along the way hard sell-offs here with big volume yeah crazy for the idea for the grade i give myself an f because it just did not do anything similar to what i thought it was going to do of potentially test these breakout levels here and execution wise i can give myself a d you know not a complete f of a failure because i was cutting it early cutting that risk um far in advance of just giving it and oh well i'll give it to the closest little resistance point here of i'll give it like till two three five which is a huge like t over 10 percent uh, or close to 10 percent risk level i would have been given it at a obvious support level that it did kind of bounce off of there and that may have even clued me in more and that's probably what trapped in a lot of these longs that got spanked out as it um, stopped out as it broke that low again but even there at that point of saying god i got 10 more percent to be able to get back in on this thing if it does retrace to there. So reestablishing my trade parameters and boundaries at that point, I think is a far better trade than trying to baggle this one saying, well, I think it's still got plenty of upside there. Let's give it to this much. No, if it's not doing what I think it's gonna do, cut it, forget it, move on to the next one. Uh, readjust, reattach a new game plan to the new chart that is always evolving and growing right before our eyes that way. Um, yeah, just as a reference for me, like the manipulation is kind of fresh 
you can r- smell the reek of manipulation potentially. They got a few warrants out there. They got the SPAC warrants. They got ABCT, ABCTW. We got to be mindful of. They got 12 million bucks in preferred stock. They got 100 million bucks of a July 2021 shelf that they just took out. 25 million bucks on the 13th of this month of December. That way, so you can, it's it's hairy for sure. That that's that's what these small cappers are. That's what we got to be aware of. Um, yeah, that was it. Just just a loser cutting it when it needed to be cut and uh, letting it die when it just wanted to die that way. TSOI was my next one that I mentioned. If we can type it correctly there. OTC ticker. I have not traded long an OTC ticker in a while. Um, of course, not going short an OTC, OTC ticker because I really can't. I don't have the broker to do it at this point, but no real strategy that I've developed yet to go short um, either in these OTC sectors. just doesn't fit my personality at this point in time. Uh, but this one was second day play, had a very nice first screen day yesterday. We were looking to hopefully get a gap up above that five cent area. And in my mind too, as I'm developing this plan, I really didn't wasn't so hot on trading this one coming into market open, but it was just, you know, there wasn't really anything hot uh, else in the small cap sector that I was just so convicted, passionate about it. But I always knew this one of, oh, hey, this one was a nice mover yesterday. We're coming up on that nice half dime area of five cents. It's just like that nice round number of five cents. Um, this could be a nice little second day move there, continuation uh, for a trade. So, hey, let's keep our eyes on this one. Let's get our toe back in the water on that one. And Sure enough, we did. But then in my mind, as I'm coming into market open, the obvious thought comes out of, man, if I'm holding this thing overnight, I definitely would have an order in, at least for some partial position shares, if not all of it, of at that five cent mark. Because if it's if we're gapping to there, then I definitely want to be out on a minimum of the low side of that trade where it's trading at five cents. And if it's not, then I want to be getting the maximum of that because we know we're going to be trading right around that point as we get into market open for where the level two was sitting. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, shoot, we might get a quick little sell-off there at that point. So let's be mindful. Let's not just go gung-ho, try to put in an order as soon as it opens um, at five cents because then we could get slapped pretty hard. And sure enough, that's what it did. Drops all the way down to 45, just a low 45. And that's where, looking on the volume profile that we were kind of collected from yesterday as well, that it shows on my scans chart here that right around this area or just above this little... 43 ish 44 point was that uh, bigger frame of support or where the collection of the volume was on today so i said kind of use that as the trade evaluation and of course the level two the turning of the level two a little bit of the turning of the time of sales uh to put in an order at 45 hey i think we're turning here i think this could be you know if we retrace all the way back to five great i'll take the sell there um if it ends up i i knew it was Going back to the OTC days, if it goes against me, then I'll take the learning lesson of having to take the slippage and just be a part of a losing trade that's continuing to go against me and I can't get filled and that debauchery. So willing to take both sides of that uh, going into this one. And for that reason, I wrote down in my journal too, I was feeling the nerves a little bit on this one. Just for some reason, it wasn't crazy position size that I was taking. And it's not like I haven't traded a similar trade to this before, but I think it was that same little thing that it is OTC and sometimes getting screwed in the past a little bit of uh, putting the hand in the fire that especially with this stupid active trader window on thinkorswim that i was able to avoid and prevent from happening today getting the actual order entry window ready uh, to go and avoiding that whole situation thinkorswim has kind of screwed me in the past a little bit on these otc stickers with how it puts in the stop orders the limit orders um, buy the ass sell the bid stupid things that way uh, but was able to avoid that today um, which was appeasing to that mentality and I think was able to save me a little bit and then having the mentality even through that little bit of okay now my heart rate's going up a little bit you know I'm not breathing slowly and deeply in this I'm just kind of it was kind of like pulling that red lever a little bit of gambling um, I think that because of yeah it was the first time we're back in OTC tickers it wasn't a this isn't a chart pattern that I've so heavily uh, got the data on or got the recent movers within the past few weeks that to say, okay, the potential for this trade is definitely there. Uh, but just kind of going on feel and getting stopped out a little bit too soon there on the sell, but getting a very nice fill perfectly at four five there for the entry. Tries to reclaim back above VWAP. And in my mind, I really needed and wanted to see that 
go pretty much perfectly back to five cents at that mark and then spike uh, above. Maybe we get a little bit of hesitation here at VWAP, but we wanted to see the bids slapping up and continuing to push this thing to new high of days in order for me to hold this thing uh, any longer than I did. And it just was that little bit of hesitation, a little bit of fall off on the bid that just said, okay, I'm ready to go with my order entry window. Uh, I do not want to be a part of that huge sell off now that we're a little bit in the profit and the dip buy was a little bit correct um, at this point. So just taking off, taking the money when I could at four, six, five, they're pretty much bottom ticking. Um, yeah, the bottom ticking the low of this candle on that one. And sure enough, it has a little attempt again, uh, to get reclaim the backside of the top side of VWAP, uh, but just gets rejected as it tries to get a high here of four, nine, two there, uh, on this candle slams back down to new low day. So just kind of like not really any huge opportunity there. And had I not even taken off, then I would have definitely been trying to fight this panic and may have gotten an even worse amount of slippage and uh, having to take a sell lower than my entry price at 45 um, around that point. So thankful and grateful for everything and that, how, that, how it happened and just to be a part of it um, overall, of course, to get back in that OTC mindset of how these things like to trade that way. But yeah, unfortunate to see that there really was no opportunity uh, at all of a second day play for continuation on that type of move. Uh, for this second day very nice volume very nice percentage move otc tick otc ticker just did not happen so idea grade that i give myself today give it a c just kind of average you know not not anything of a b or an a to give myself hey there was actual there was huge profit opportunity the profit opportunity was there on that trade idea it just really wasn't there was just kind of a glean and that's kind of what i capitalized on today of hey there's a dip by bottom here and there's you can kind of get out here but it's nothing really awesome so pairing alongside that, the execution grade, I gave myself a C in the same light that I was out a little bit too soon. You know, maybe I could have scrapped out a few more cents, but had I been doing that, then I also would have been in a different mentality of, okay, this thing should be spiking above five and recognizing that it's not going to do that, then would have been having to fight that slippage as it's panicking down uh, against all the people who are thinking the same thing, looking for the push above five cents there. So just, yeah, all around uh, <laughs> being able to pull out a 3% profit on anything on a trade that didn't even fully offer you a full opportunity of uh, what you thought it was going to do, man, I can't deny that. And uh, of course, things to learn from, from this going forward, key takeaways, again, just to continue to reaffirm that OTC mindset uh, for these types of tickers that like to move that way. <sighs> but yeah, that was TSOI. PTPI, last one on the day that Still currently in, like I mentioned, with half of my position that I took from the morning open range today. <clears throat> Forgot to mention as well today, too, in and out with some neighbors and uh, other family members coming by today. Uh, so a little bit away from the computer, distracted for what I could, what I could be doing, uh, putting stop orders and putting limit orders in that way. But this PTAPI, again, it's been in this multi-day just crazy run here that's continuing to hold. I'll draw the line again. Just continuing to hold this little bottom wedge line pattern onward and upward forever uh, and looking for the potential break to the downside up there. And this was one that I mentioned yesterday of, you know, this could be one of those that you just you hold a little long position. And as soon as you see or recognize that it does break the bottom side of that wedge line, then that's your obvious cue to get out. Uh, but I could so see this for the next few days still having it run up, still continuing above this little arbitrary line here that we're drawing but then again i could also see it faking i could see it ripping down below that line and providing a little fake out and then spiking back above and just stopping out everybody that's looking to play the downside like me that was looking to play that today i'm so i could see a lot of wishy-washy coming into this one but it was just very uh, speculative trade coming into today looking to not only crack this downside wedge line today but break through it hard uh, looking for that hard red day that did not happen today but still even at that as we're uh, coming into pre-market today and it's just kind of getting a little elevated a little bit too spiky in pre-market um, i do i failed to recognize the vwap rejection here that happened as i was looking at other tickers i think it was still in tsoi at that point um, around that time frame that reject rejects VWAP pretty nicely. And then I pull up the chart again, see, okay, we're breaking the new low of days here. I'm going to start in with a position of, I think I started in with 200 shares. Um, this was all, there was no shares available to short through trade zero. So carried on the perspective of what I've been doing the past 
a few weeks of, okay, sweet. Well, this will be my mental trade on the day. Just keep me in, keep me trading, but then also keep my brain in the perspective that this is all flashing numbers and lights on a screen. This is, that is what it is. It isn't, doesn't require any emotion, doesn't require um, any logic or attachment to money that this, it is what it is that way. But anyway, back to the trade of, okay, looking at sizing, I think it's going to crack below a day here. I think the potential is there that we could certainly pick up steam if we're breaking uh, pretty significant levels here. So sure enough, we crack 3.9 pretty hard, drop all the way uh, below 3.8 and start sizing it again. I think it's, this is this that snowball effect. Um, if it starts to speed up there that uh, it could get out of hand pretty quick to the downside if there's a lot of bag holders in this one. And there's certainly a lot of overhead in these little perky volume days on this one that could still could still be sitting pretty nicely, especially looking on the daily. So again, looking for the profit target in my mind is just almost, I got to be thinking minimum of three bucks. We got to be looking for the big volume. We got to be looking for just hard panicking sell off. That's the trade thesis coming into this one today. Um, so I can't grade myself or give myself an execution because I'm still sitting in it at the moment, but just really f found the support around three, six point and forcing my hands to cover at least some of it to cover half of it coming into tomorrow just to give myself a little bit of comfort uh, of a risk profile holding anything overnight short but to say yeah just kind of forcing my hand covering it was just like i don't want to cover you but it was as we're getting huge volume perks and it's really failing to um you know, mentioning here of just little like fake out points like this one that happened midday of okay now we're breaking to new lows here on pretty decent volume perfectly bouncing off a three five huge upside green candle move that's just saying nope we're not going down fully today it's just like god i don't want to cover you but you're just giving me the signs that i have to cover so having to be taking off just little splices of shares uh, of the position at these little times here i just said okay well uh, yeah do whatever you want to do i'm gonna i still think the thesis is there and we've have not broken that line of course the trade thesis hasn't come to full effect and uh, that's why the half of the position is still on because i'm thinking the move could still be there to the bottom side to the downside um but gosh yeah of just paying myself along the way i'm not trading of on by the p l side of course um but just of what this chart is saying like you we're not we're certainly not going to do that today so are we willing to take that full risk going into tomorrow, taking the full position size overnight? If the trade thesis do you think is still there? But even from the start, I knew this was going to be a speculative guessing position going forward anyway. Um, so just happy to take the profits as they're there and happy to learn from the educational experience that this one will provide. It could be um, a nice sell-off tomorrow, the big volume day that ends up cracking to the downside there, or it could be you know, we get three, four more days that still hold above this line. And we just hover right around that $4 line uh, again, and maybe have a few, few perky days there, but um, who knows? It'll certainly be one fun to watch that way. Those are my traders on the day. Nothing really hard that's hitting me conviction wise on the scans as of right now, still pretty close after uh, market close here. Yeah, just nothing catching my eye that way we will certainly do some harder scans later tonight recap some of the charts and use them for reference going forward for the next few trading days but that is all i had i sincerely thank you guys for watching we will catch you guys on the next one